In this demonstration, we'll see that sometimes we can fight thermodynamics almost to a draw, even if we can never prevail against one of the three laws. On the bench here, I have a cylindrical flask, inside of which is another cylinder of only slightly smaller diameter. In between the two is a fluid that is clear and colorless. At one position along the cylinder, a line of dye has been added to the fluid. Do you see? What will happen if I turn the inner cylinder? Certainly we know that the entropy of mixing will favor distribution of the dye uniformly throughout the available volume. So let's see what happens. Sure enough, as I turn the cylinder, the dye distributes. And by the time I've done about two revolutions, the color seems to be widely distributed throughout, even if not yet completely uniform, about as one might expect. Now, what will happen if I reverse my turning of the inner cylinder? We know that mixed substances cannot spontaneously separate unless there is some kind of phase change. So the normal expectation would be for nothing obvious to happen. But let's try. Wow! All the dye has returned almost perfectly to its original position. What's happened? Have we beaten entropy? The answer is no, although your eyes have been tricked into thinking it true. The trick that is involved is that the very thin layer of fluid between the two cylinders causes the flow in the liquid to be extremely uniform with little exchange between adjacent small volume elements. The apparent homogeneous mixture that was created by our initial rotation of the inner cylinder was not actually homogeneous, but simply uniformly distributed the dye around the circumference with the possibility of bringing it back through reversal of the motion. If we were to measure carefully, we would see that there has been some broadening of the dye line, driven by entropy, and if we were to repeatedly cycle back and forth, with each step, the mixing would become more complete until indeed we did end up with a homogeneous mixture of the dye and the fluid. So remember, the second law does allow for reversible processes having zero entropy change. While they are often hard to engineer in practice, they are not impossible. And this device is one example that illustrates a process that is very nearly reversible.